Deputy Speaker. I'm pleased to speak on this matter of importance. Centrelink is beset by falling service standards. These are the direct result of measures undertaken by this government in the name of reform, but that have actually made the situation much worse, not only for the clients of Centrelink, but for the staff charged with the administration at the front line. My office is constantly dealing with the issues relating to Centrelink. This is unsurprising given that complaints are up over 18 per cent, according to the most recent Department of Human Services report. Lucky my office is able to answer the calls when they ring out of desperation. <coughs> Centrelink clients are some of the most disadvantaged in my electorate. They are only seeking support to live, not to rot the system. Most of them just want to be able to survive until they find a job or, be to, or to be supported in managing a disability of their own or within their family, or just to live quietly in retirement. Often my office is contacted, not because the situation is complicated, but because the people looking to access support do not know where they stand or because they're trying to do the right this thing, but the system is so broken it is difficult for them to do it. Many of my constituents lack internet access, whether that's the result of the continuing poor internet coverage in many areas across southwest Sydney or because of their age, infirmity or financial situation. Using technology for these people to access online services is difficult. Consequently, the support phone line and the local Centrelink office remain key points of contact. Accessing the phone service becomes difficult when the credit available on your prepaid mo mobile will scarcely cover the cost waiting to reach a staff member. The waiting time is benchmarked at 16 minutes. However, we know that according to the 2015 audit, 30 per cent of callers wait on hold for a half an hour or more, and my constituents have described waiting times of more than an hour. So if my constituents can't wait on a phone line, that leaves the local Centrelink office. What does it say about us when our most vulnerable are forced to wait upwards of 45 minutes to make an appointment, only to expect them to return the following day? Often these people have serious limitations on their movement through infirmity or because they struggle with costs of transport. In most cases, they're simply trying to ascertain the status of their claim or update their information. Consistently, a Centrelink office near me has, their, has lines out the door. I know that the staff at Centrelink are happy to do their job and have a sincere desire to help their community. I don't, they must be under continual stress, with long phone queues and watching um, customers wait for long periods of time in the office. However, instead of employing more staff to help out, where there will be even more cuts to the Centrelink staff. Even constituents who simply use the fast and simple MyGov Act require face issues. The issue of being unable to update income has been raised multiple times with me. In one such case I am made aware of, the app failed to record the data, however the constituent received no indication of this error, only later to find out they had accrued a significant tax debt at the end of the financial year. Another had been told there is a technical issue with the app. That means she'd need to ring fortnightly to report her husband's earnings. She has small children. Waiting for an hour on the phone is not only inconvenient but costly to her family, who can least afford it. We're, we are an affluent society. We should support our most vulnerable and not consistently make them feel like criminals. Most people want to work if they can, and when they retire they just want to be able to enjoy a decent quality of life. The government should ensure that Centrelink supports rather than further hurts the people who need it most. <laughs>